Hey, welcome back to non sexical Monster Pro. <laughs> <laughs> Only, only, only will have gotten that if you watched the very end of the last episode. We've been doing this for six years. It was six years we've been playing this fucking game. Oh my god. Started with Last Call Gamers Part 1. Yeah. Anyway, we're back. I get to go first, because fuck you. Aw. I'm still trying to take Liam to prom, and I've gotten all but, like, yeah, this is... Yeah, we, you're almost at I'm prom king. I'm doing pretty yeah, good. you at prom king Liam. Uh, I very well could. We're going to charm, though. You get your charm. Yeah. Get all your charms. Get all your charms. Charms. Later, you see Liam scrolling through his phone, looking like the embodiment of ennui. <clears throat> hey, Quiria, what are you doing? Stocking classmates for romantic purposes and offering rather absurd advice? Magnificent! I could use some rather absurd advice. I was exchanging messages with a were koala on this dating site, and all was going well for a time, but I've grown tired of our exchanges. He's a bit clingy, and being clingy is my seventh biggest turnoff. Right between sarcasm, illiteracy, and actually being a pickle and not a person. <laughs> I mean, I like a pickle, but yeah, that's just me. Mm -hmm. Dang, I'll anyway. the, the She likes nickel or pickle, Rob. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The postmodern jukebox protocol <laughs> dictates for me just to <laughs> ghost him <laughs> and never talk to him again. Pretty but that's bad. horrible, and I would yes. never do that to someone. You see, I'm Liam. Handsomely mysterious, yet a true gentleman. But neither do I want the emotional turmoil of telling him how I really feel and having an actual conversation about it. What an ordeal! So I've said I'm just sending him a bunch of emojis, then never texting him again. That should do it, right? The thing is, how can I convey this complex array of sentiments through the friendly language of emojis? This is your time to shine. Surely him you excel at complex sentience, so he might someday feel like it's sharing them with you. Sentience. Sentiments? Maybe croissant, school bus, shooting star, trumpet, and crocodile. This one, little vampire growing disinterested and overly attached koala, wear koala emoji. I don't... <laughs> this does seem to be part of the King Liam. I'm thinking... No, I don't think it is. And I think the bottom one... One of them's creativity. My creativity is my lowest. Um, but I don't know which one. Probably the top one's creativity and the bottom one's smarts. Yeah. Yes! Oh, that one is clearly the best option. How didn't I think of that? Because it doesn't fucking exist. Which version should I choose? Little vampire growing disinterested and overly attached wear koala or little vampire with a silly hat growing disinterested and overly attached wear koala? Maybe the silly hat is not suited for the situation. Let's go with the classic. Okay, just sent it. He texted me back, let's see. Oh, the wear koala being understanding of the little vampire's feelings respecting them even if it is a bit hurried emoji. I'm replying back with the formerly grateful and ready to move on poop emoji. <laughs> Look at this. He just texted me an emoji that's just that's waving his hand like he's saying bye with an expression that says he's going to break all bonds but without being resentful about it. Perfect! We saw this as a team. Cheers to us! And cheers to the creative people that have turned every complex feeling and scenario into a friendly, colorful emoji. You gain two charm and one creativity. Part of me really wants someone to actually make, like, not emojis, but, like, little pictures of those emojis. <laughs> Just for, like, the shit, like, how, how do you do that? Let's give me some smarts. Okay. Uh, no. Okay, no, you're smart. Oh, yeah, she's yeah. in the library. Yeah, yeah that's right. That was gonna go for money, but she's in the library. Between class periods, you discover a severed horse in your locker. It has a note in its mouth, telling you to meet Vera ASAP. I'm glad you've come. I have another crime problem, which would benefit from your insight. Are you on a secret ending? You must be on a secret ending. Yeah, it's her... Oh, you uh, crime her, boss? Her crime oh, your crime boss, boss ending. Okay. Thanks to your input, murder has cornered the market in app-based assassinations, and yet the other crime lawyers don't take me seriously. Just because I'm not a 40-year-old man with a scary scar, those sexist morons think this is just a phase for me. Since when did having a killer body and flawless skin disqualify a girl from a life of crime? It's disgusting. Disgusting. Disgusting! Disgusting! I'm, uh, confused. <laughs> I don't know what's going uh, on either. I was either. doing the one English video that did Okay. I, I was just doing things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You boys doing just things. <laughs> That's what and they come here for. That and, you know, Sakura's games. Yeah. We will get back to Sakura games eventually. 
Cop. How can I show these chauvinist skills what crime really means to me? Come on, think of something. You're my most trusted advisor. Quit crime. They'll come crawling back when they see how bad it is without you. Write a song about it. I'll help. I have no Quit idea. Quit crime. Do you think that's it? Open. No! Oh, damn it! You were so close. It's so good. Going so well until now. You know, if this device was coming from anyone other than you, I'd ignore it. But you haven't been wrong yet. Fine, as of today, I'm quitting crime. I'll let the other bosses know. I'm sure they'll be so pleased. A few days later, you're getting manicure with Vera. With Vera, when she gets a mobile notification, and practically screams. Those punks! Did you know the ice pick and Hungry Mark invited all the other crime lords to the beach for a barbecue? They're posting pictures on Momogram. They're having so much fun selling heroin and murdering each other without me. Ugh, I wish I was there. I could murder all of them so much better than they're murdering each other. And do you see how Joey the Arsonist is cooking those burgers? They're not even close to rare. They're lost without me and they don't even know it. I never should have listened to you. So advisor you are. Vera doesn't leave any more horse heads in your locker. you think that would be a good thing, but it's symbolic of a loss of trust between you. You lose one, two fun and one charm. Oh, Damn it, we were so close. We were doing so well. Yeah, we were oh, re uh, nailing it. Where do you want to go? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Uh, fun? Look, like I've thrown my hip out. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, my butt is so surprised. <laughs> you know, she knows Vera and Miranda at the edge of the rave with their arms crossed. You dance over to try to find about what's up. I truly want to be excited about this uproarious event, but... I'll say what you're bo we're both thinking. This rave looks like a techno trash fire. I did not much to be crude, but it is true. I want to hang out and have a good time. Having a good time. Having but a good time. But I can't relax in this chaotic environment. I put some thought into this, and I think that the problem is lack of color coordination. I doubt it. <laughs> it almost always is! That's why my father painted everyone in the kingdom aquamarine! And yet you're pink. Yeah. But we have no legal authority in this raid. How will we ever coordinate their colors? That's where I'm stuck right now. Frankly, if only there were some other way. Filter everyone through this dangerous magic prism. Color-seeking German Shepherds. Color-seeking Color German Shepherds. Color-seeking German Shepherds. Well, I know what the name of this episode's gonna be. God damn it. I mean, it depends. What are you going to be? I mean, after that little jot, we gotta go with Color-seeking German Shepherds. Yeah! <laughs> puppies! I love puppies! And I would love more color-coordinating puppies even more! I, too, am a fan of combining organization with punishment. If you don't dance in the proper area, you get the dog. Oh my god. <laughs> you release the hounds, which you have been training for the exact purpose for some reason. <laughs> they snatch screamy dancers by the, with their in their fangs and cling them into their appropriate zones. Wow, the dogs have created separ separate sections for white eggshell and corn soap. After they're done organizing this rave, I'd like these dogs to organize my wardrobe. You learn a lot about party management and color theory this week. <laughs> you gave plus two smarts and one fun. Hell yeah. Those stats are so ridiculous. Yeah, ridiculous. holy crap. Jeez. And you're going after the narrator. <laughs> I know. Alright, this is the last I day. I know! I know! <laughs> anyway, last who, time. <laughs> who we say? Man girl. <laughs> and man girl. Oh, it's the wolf pack. What's wolf pack by themselves? Yes. Yeah. That's odd. Who, who, are you I sure? Not, you're, you're up. Who do you yeah. want to do? Oh, you're going with the Wolfpack? Wolf pack, I said, yes. All right. I haven't done my shit. You're about to dig into a delicious bowl of beef jerky when you see the Wolfpack across the table panting at you. Who eats beef jerky out of a bowl? Uh, You've never eaten beef jerky out of a yo bowl? Yo, dog, can we have some of that beefy J you got there? We love meats with the, that have been jerked. <gasps> I think you might. <laughs> I think, mm, did you guys see the the, <laughs> the mythical morning where they they raided beef jerky? No. You haven't been watching that. Oh, yeah, we really haven't. It, watched it is an older episode, but uh, yeah, the, I had heard of three of the kinds that they had, and like I was really mad because my favorite brand wasn't in there. <laughs> oh, old, old Trapper. I had Old Trapper. It's, it's so good. It's right? not bad. Like yeah. it's pretty good actually. Yeah. I we went to. Um, Jungle Gyms. Yeah. 
and you can get I'll a trapper anymore. I know, but that's like I bought like a bunch of beef jerky and jungle gyms. I'm pretty sure Old Trapper is one of them. Oh yeah. Anyway. Yeah, every day. <laughs> no, but okay. please. Come on, we'll totally trade you anything for from our lunch. You're gonna have this dead ferret or this half chew telephone receiver or. Well, one of them is talking, the others just straight up eat your beef jerky. You hit their noses with the noose here, but it's too late. Haha, <laughs> whoops! Guess we've got a trade after all, huh? Which of our foods do you want, dog? How about this black plastic bottle labeled, seriously don't drink this, it's poison? Nothing. Give me a beef jerky back. Now. Give me the poison. Oh, is that what it says? We found in the garbage bin with the skull and crossbones on it. Bones are good to eat, so we took it. But... If that's the only thing you want, I guess you can have it. <laughs> Fucking face. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> His eyes are so crossed. Yeah. Really. You don't give them time to change their minds. You reach across the table, snatch it, chug. On the TV news that night, you learn that after drinking the elixir, you went to a bit of a rampage. Specifically, you declared that a cafeteria is sovereign state and abolished all laws except for party forever. Your government was soon overthrown by the National Guard, and you've been nominated for the Nobel Prize for partying. You gain plus four fun. That seems like it should have been a poly thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Party fruit. I also thought it was, I thought the coach was going to be like, no, that's poison. <laughs> but that's a different thing when he's there. Oh, who are you going with? I don't know. Take me to the, the store. I'm going to buy some of all the money I have. All right. I don't know what. You can just get the gift. Give me the gift. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> it's like the last day. Just fuck up your stats. Oh, that's could. right. Could, you want to use some cocaine? <laughs> Regular flavor? <laughs> uh, forget. All right. Forget what that gives you. I think it's smarts. No, no. The no. Wait. That that's, that gives you fun. That's a quest thing. Yeah. I think it's charm. How to sexy Latin? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wonder what that one is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I can't imagine. Creativity. Obviously, that's boldness. So this has got to be smarts. Give me the cocaine. Alright. <laughs> oh, you lost some stats, but you gained boldness and fun. Whatever. Yeah, you lost your charm. Whatever. And your smarts. Alright. You notice Leah looking disgruntled. Which, which is, is his default. Yeah, right. So, whatever. <laughs> yeah, sorry. But it seems like Miranda is pretty upset, too. Better check it out. Liam, why are you typing on your phone so angrily? Your phone of Did your phone offend you in some way? Why are you mad at it? You seem to be an 8.5 on the frowning Liam scale. The what? The frowning Liam scale. Nobody can tell how people are feeling from their faces, but you seem to be frowning most of the time, so I created a chart to measure your frowniness. Miranda pulls out a notepad and displays a series of doodles of Liam's frowniness. They're not super accurate, but they are super adorable. I'm not angry at my phone. My so-called frowniness is caused by a heinous error. I specifically asked what my, that my creature creme brulee be extra crispy so it truly popped on my hashtag massacre moment cram filter. Instead they burnt it to a crisp rendering it unphotographable. Monsters deserve to know what they're getting into if they choose to eat at this cafeteria so they can choose to take their business to a different establishment and so I'm writing a scathing whelp review. <laughs> whelp? Yeah. Whelp. <laughs> Liam, you can't do that. If they shut the cafeteria down, the school kids and staff will lose their jobs. Did you know that peasants have to do labor to make living wages? They don't simply have an unlimited store of gold. I was shocked when I first found out. Of course you were. If the kitchen staff wanted to earn their wages, they should have been better at their jobs. I am simply the merchant of truth. No, you're the merchant of poop! Burn! Burn! <laughs> oh! <laughs> You roll sophistication and signs through. Look, as Korea, her taste may trend towards the mainstream, but surely she can see the subpar cafeteria must be exposed. Don't be ridiculous. Korea is surely more compassionate than that and would gladly help me save the cafeteria again. Uh, again? Gotta start to keep track of your misadventures of this shit show of a school. Still, you'll help if you can. Miranda can't undermine Liam's admittedly talented criticism alone. This will take an army. Of homeless people, we pay to write positive whelp reviews of the cafeteria until we eclipse Liam's. Liam, one lone voice simply cannot shut down this cafeteria. At least not the voice of a high schooler. Let's get renowned food critic, a renowned food critic, to write a Pulitzer-worthy expose to be published in the most widely read periodicals. Excellent idea! 
I am an incredible, intelligent, compassionate person with tons of humility. More than enough to admit when a professional's help may be of use to me. You think you have the most humility? You shall never be as humble as I am. Every day my servants tell me I am the humblest person ever to live. Miranda storms off in a huff, leaving you and Liam to proceed with your amazing, incredible, genius plan. You're super hum humble, too. <laughs> you use your magnificent calligraphy skills you picked up in your elective class, Calligraphy and Murder, to write a five-letter chalk full of hashtag aesthetic. Liam produces a delicate white dove from his backpack. How is it breathing in there? And gives it the newly addressed letters. You're not sure what's more intriguing, the fact that Liam trusts that the dove will be able to read the addresses and deliver the letters, or the fact that the addresses he wrote down were just their emails? Regardless, it seems that you have it to have worked, because within minutes of the Dove's release, you receive your first reply on your phones. Ah, I knew the exquisite Jacques Anuzor would have an enthusiasm for our plight. Thus is the immediate response. Dear Liam, I received your message, though the calligraphy... I don't know what... Why is this written with a French accent? I don't understand. I, I don't know. <laughs> though though this, the calligraphy is quite impressive, I'm afraid I must give you the same answer I gave you when you asked me to write a review of the on the cuisine cooked by your friend's grandmother's last Thanksgiving. I don't know how you got a dub to find out where I live based on my email address. But stop contacting me. Most loving yours, great and humblest food critic, Jacques Onesvore. Oh, Korea, nobody understands the severity of criminal transgression. Thank goodness we have each other. Heck yeah, you have each other. For prom? Hopefully. But at least maybe you'll let you borrow that dove sometime to send anthrax to your enemies. <laughs> it's the last day. That's straight places. It's the last day. Everybody choose a movie. Say a movie. Pick a movie in the comments. What die Hard. <laughs> I want to do Die Hard. I think we're not saying. You didn't do <laughs> I picked. Who Doc Saints? <laughs> anyway, uh, Korea, where are you going? I'm going, I don't know. I don't know! Uh, I'm just gonna go to smarts because I don't know. Okay. I'm so bored. You're also getting two smarts. With that out of the way, you hurry away your secret meeting with Miranda. <gasps> oh boy! Well done, co conspirator! Operation Make the Liam Popular again is a rousing success! And for the record, I did discover that Liam was popular for a three-month period in the early 16th century, so the name fits. All that remains is for us to wait for prom and celebrate our... Your deception? I knew it was too good to be true. My idiosyncrasies are remarkable, but they aren't marketable. This was all a cruel joke, wasn't it? A bet between two popular kids that they could make an outcast loser to prom king. Well, guess what? The circus is over, and this clown is climbing back through his tiny car and going home. Screw you guys. Along with, Have him, along with, like, 12 other tiny clowns, if the metaphor holds. Which, it doesn't. It was a bad metaphor. Goodbye. No, Liam. I wasn't trying to be mean. I don't have a mean bone on my body. I don't even have bones. You might check out that affirmation later. Oh, fish sticks. If we don't do something to fix this, all our hard work and subterfuge will be for naught. But how can we make amends? Surely not with some sort of overwrought romantic gesture defying all logic. You tell Miranda not to worry. You've seen plenty of teen rom-coms. You know how this part goes. You need a grand romantic gesture. Race to the airport to confess feelings before Liam boards his plane. Pay a million people to spell out I'm sorry so it gets visible from space. Uh, oh no! The money is really high. It I is. don't think the top one is smart. Okay. Yay! <laughs> with your financial holdings combined, you and Miranda are able to hire a million idiots to spell out words with their bodies. <laughs> Hooray for paying my way to love! Perfect! Now we just need to get Liam into orbit so he can see our heartfelt apology! Ed, what are you doing? Why did you strap me to this rocket? <laughs> Calm down, silly! We're apologizing! Are you going to apologize for this after you're done, too? Of course not. That would be apologizing forever, and I only have three more rockets. Okay, yeah, it's great. Apology accepted. I'll be the stupid prop king. Get me out of space. Huzzah! I love making amends. Okay, I guess if you're willing to launch me to space to say you're sorry, you must really care about me? And I must admit, it feels sort of good to be popular. Don't you dare tell them when I said that. 
He probably wants to tell anyone Lena said that. As long as he seriously considers taking you to prom, you gain two charm and one fun. Hell yeah! Right. Jackson, in. Where are you going? Uh, money? Charm? Yeah. He, you know, he, he, she needs money. She's kicking a little beer to prom. You guys have a specific amount of money, and I think you're okay. Without warning, Vera pulls you aside and hisses in your ear. Oh. My. God. The stalker's back. The stalker's back and it's gonna be trouble. You follow her pointed finger and see a guy dressed in white toga and winged sandals facing away from you. He looks like a creep. He's been following me everywhere. He thinks I don't notice him checking me out in that mirrored shield he has, but I totally do. I don't remember this one. <laughs> I know what they're talking about, I just don't remember this being a thing. Ugh, it's such a chore being this beautiful all the time. How am I ever going to get rid of him? Threaten to feed a damsel to a sea monster. That'll distract him. He looks Greek. Why not bribe Zeus, king of the gods? Bribing. Uh, bribing, yeah. yeah. your money's definitely Yep. You, have, you buy a bunch of wine and hookers and burn them on a golden altar to Zeus. Why, why are you burning hookers? Whatever. Why are you burning wine? That's the revelation. <laughs> the clouds glow with unearthly light. Thunder booms and a bolt of lightning crackles and strikes Vera Stalker. Ow! He screams. Fuck you, Dad. <laughs> I wish I never turned to a gold dust and pissed on. I wish I never turned to gold dust and pissed on my mom. What the fuck? <laughs> you don't remember that happening? <laughs> Badly singed, the stalker limps away, shaking his fist at the sky. I remember that is badly singed. <laughs> like, whatever. Hey, that was cool. Thanks. The ancient Greeks sure seem to have some odd ideas about how babies are made. You gave plus two fun and one plus yeah, one smarts. All right, hey, my money is, is the four. worst, but I don't need money. Yeah. Uh, you already went to smarts, so... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there. Charm, take there. sure. Take the bear, you lose five mercy. Yeah, yeah, whatever you... Whatever, you're in a place at the school. Anyways, I need to talk to you. Look, I know what you're up to. I've seen you do this with dozens of times. Plenty, of pretty much everyone here. I've seen it all. The careful choices being two wacky options. The fiendish stat optimizations. Your tendency to mostly remain silent for some reason. And, I mean, I think you're cute. I really appreciate you finally figuring out a way for me to get out of that narrated, uh, narrating case for me. Dramatic pause to allow someone to show up and cause narration-related problems again. No? Okay, as I was saying. I really like you, but I don't experience spooky hell like the rest of your classmates. I'm acutely aware of the fact that I have lived the same three-week period leading up to proms hundreds, no, thousands of times. It's always the same. I talk to you through the lead-up to prom. You ask someone out. They usually laugh in your face, and then it's three weeks before prom again, and everyone seems to have forgotten all about what happened. I'm the only one who remembers. I don't know what I've done to deserve this torment. Is this private hell constructed to punish an unvirtuous life? Am I the mere plaything of some sadistic deity? Am I in a coma, spending this elaborate yarn to provide some stimulation to my slow deteriorating brain? I'll never know for sure. All I know is that every time you decide you want to try bonking one of your classmates again, I forced you to play to repeat the same three zany weeks one more time. So I guess that you're going to try to ask me to prom, and I'm flattered. But if it's just hard to get in the mood when I'm actually aware of the private hell I perpetually inhabit, you know? But you've never ever been to Monster Prom. How do you know that going won't, like, break the curse or something? But what about sex? <laughs> I have no idea which prompt this would be. Um... I'm going to guess this is fun, and fun is your highest. Okay. Do it. It was charm, whatever. But my charm is like my third lowest. That means that one must have been smarts. The only one he had. <laughs> Alright. A uh, compelling point. But if we're going to make love, can we please try to make it super duper weird? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Seriously, I've been trapped in the soup for so long that my sexual predilections have gone from sort of kinky to... Marque de Sade on GHB. <laughs> so as long as you're willing to devote at least seven hours, $200,000, and a prized pig from the Indiana State Fair, I'm in all the way, baby. <laughs> your words say nothing, but your eyes say, hell yes, do me like a rabid dolphin in the sea of ecstasy. <laughs> I think you're willing to please deserves at least two fun and one charm, don't you? 
I'll see you at prom. Hot stuff. Big goggles. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right. Corey, who are you asking to prom? I'm asking fucking Leah. Are you fucking kidding me? Who else would I go with? He's only my bae. <laughs> Gee, I wonder who I'm Yeah, going Vera, for. right? Uh, no, Scott, right? It was Scott. Uh, definitely Scott. Yeah. Oh, okay. Alright, and nobody. Nobody. Alright. Jackson, here, get ready to get turned down. Yeah, for missing one fucking thing. Yep. You finally pick up your courage and ask your beloved to go to Monster Prom with you. You're asking me to go to prom with you? Have you seen oh, yourself in a mirror? Oh. Your face is a crime against humanity, and not one of the crimes against humanity I enjoy perpetuating. Per perpetrating. Bye, loser. Oh. It's okay. You moved on from this horrible, shameful failure. You become a, fra a functional person. Eventually, you meet a sweet banshee named Ash. You shared lots of common interests. And after dating for some years, you married. One day, in the middle of casual conversation, you mentioned how you couldn't get a date for Monster Prom. Despite your years of happiness, your marriage couldn't endure such pathetic revelation, and so Ash abandoned you the next day. And thus you lived the rest of your life alone and sad. Never forget, Monster Prom is the most important thing. Jesus, really? Who could have foreseen this? Liam and Korea, prom royalty. We did! It was all our plan! We fought for love and love won! Not like the law! The, the law, law always wins! Liam is popular again! Huzzah! Anyway... After all these years spent avoiding cliches, this doesn't feel as bad as I imagined. Maybe doing a one hit, 180 degree turn from cliches is good, but embracing cliches is like making a 360 degree turn from them? So disruptive. At that moment, Miranda becomes distracted by some other wacky plan and leaves you with Liam mumbling to himself. Such a lovable dork. Prom night arrives and the two of you decide to embrace all cliches, from slow dancing to actually having fun. After the coronation, Liam admits he's having a great time, which is causing him to reflect on all the cliches he's avoided all these years, to which he is now embrace. He can now embrace. Then he puts his hand over yours and says, "And you know what the biggest cliche I've been avoiding is? Love. And I don't even care how cheesy that sounded. Boy, that was cheesy. But you know what? You don't care either." Frankie, you ask none of the prompt because you really want to ask me. And the narrator said, Yes. Wink. No, but really, I'd love to. I've seen this so many times, as if some kind of ancient curse. Every event, every outcome, mostly of you being rejected, if I had to be honest. <laughs> Repeating into exhaustion. I've also seen you having delightful prom nights many times, with all kinds of different people. Yet never with me. But that's about to change, right? You and the neighbor have a, the time of your lives. Wait, you just now got an achievement? Yeah, I don't think we... I think we... Second term, something like that? Well done, player. I think we've not gotten him to actually go to, to prom, maybe? Uh -huh. You dance and kiss and laugh. You tell the neighbor you've always thought he is the smartest, coolest, handsomest person in Spooky High. Actually, in the whole world. He does the best narrating, and he rocks his narrator hat. And he is the humblest person ever. <laughs> Why am I the whole humble shit? You know he has a different hat on now? Yeah. And he has a bow tie above his dick? Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> that's the best place to have a bow tie. And so the narrator smiled at you and told you, we will have tons of wild sex tonight. And so you do! Because even if this is bound to repeat forever, at least you can break the cycle for just one night. You know? And who knows? Maybe next time you relieve these three dreadful weeks, even with everything will look the same, something will have slightly changed. Because you will know that the narrator is there, narrating especially for you. Yay! We got six. We did not get a new secret ending, so I don't think. I'm, I'm guessing we have gotten him, but yeah. Titus anyway. Manbun. Titus Manbun. Hey! Ba da 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 ba 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 da. Those three. Oh, yeah. no, you, 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 you have to. You have to do uh, the the ad lib now. <laughs> those three weeks came. <laughs> those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the Moscam, we kept him living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendships, having a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament, and learning about those who were and who would who we could be. <laughs> I like how you said Monster Camp. <laughs> Did I say Monster Camp? You said like Monster Crop or something. <laughs> and you know what? Sometimes you just have to say the wrong name because this is the last day of the week, and that's how it goes. <laughs> like, like it always does. Life happened, and it was wonderful. Scott unexpectedly ended up in film school and parted with Vera. 
co-create their very own TV show. We Wait, talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> it was bought by <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> since Netflix will buy anything. Even a crazy TV show co-created by recently graduated high schoolers. Liam kept doing art so hard he eventually evaporated and became the concept of coolness himself. As he left the physical plane, the last thing Liam did was give everyone a condescending look. <laughs> God, I love Miranda used her vast knowledge of serfs to get a job handpicking the best serfs for other people. Unsurprisingly, she ended up leaving her serfs to do the work. <laughs> for those three weeks, those three weeks, the monster prom seemed larger than life, and then it was gone, just like that. The battle for monster prom might have been ended there, but there are plenty of battles left to win in that war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Hell ba yeah. ba -da -da. Ba -da -da. No, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, I'm gonna. I'm, go so, I'm so glad we're back, everybody. Yes. Yeah. Well, all right. We didn't unlock anything in the gallery, I don't think. No, because we played this game yeah. so many fucking times. But yes, so that's it for Monster Prom. We still, I think there's actually is like an ending or two we we never got. No, there was like five. It said we got 43 or 47. So oh jeez. Anyway, we'll see you guys next time. I don't know if it will be next week. We'll see how things go. Uh, we're still moving into this apartment, and we're still trying to figure out our new setup. So, bye, everybody. Bye. I love you. You're the coolest audience. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell button. I mean, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty easy to keep track of when we put stuff yeah. out. <laughs> Yeah, but then you'll be notified if you hit the bell icon so you'll know if it's Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. In case you have trouble remembering. Nobody's watching this video at this point. I think they will no. turn it off by now. Yeah, I'm not sure they have. <laughs> in that case, we're just going to like drop some wisdom on them. Drop some, like... The, it, 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 comment down below the next thing that Matt says if you watch to the end. And I will personally like it on not, not the main account, my personal account. Because I have that. I mean, I guess I could also do that with my personal account. Yeah. I commented plenty of times. Yeah, but uh, you gotta say. I gotta, I gotta drop so the, I gotta, what, I gotta what word are we gonna have my voice. Say? Yeah, what word are we gonna what are we gonna have put out in the comments to to signify that they've watched this all the way to the end of the episode. Is there a chicken emoji for to Do they even up? have emojis? I think so. Yeah, because just my, if there's a chicken emoji, put a chicken emoji. If there's not Write out the word chicken emoji. Ha <laughs> hash hashtag chicken emoji. Yes. Uh, it's it's to commemorate that Damien was nowhere in this episode, yes. so there was no Damien's big cock. Yes. They actually came hash out with hashtag the, Damien's big cock. Yeah. They actually put came, yeah any of those any of those are because if, honestly if you put any of those you, we know that you've made it to the end of the episode. <laughs> Bye everybody. We'll uh, see you next time. Bye.